Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very interesting topic to discuss. It is a lifting body aircraft. A lifting body aircraft is a type of aircraft design where the lift required to raise the aircraft off the ground is provided solely by the fuselage of the aircraft. The lifting body design was first considered in 1917 and was patented by Roy Scroggs. He called his aircraft the last laugh. The lifting wing design is extremely inefficient at low speeds, so it did not enter into the mainstream aeroplane design in the early 1920s. The main research for this aircraft was done by NASA during the 60s and continued up until the 1990s. The Mercury and Gemini projects of NASA were aimed to put the first astronaut in space. These projects occurred during the height of the Cold War between the US and the USSR. During re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere from space, the astronaut capsules will have no control surfaces. Hence, it was impossible to control where they would land during re-entry. To overcome this, extreme meticulous planning was done during the deorbiting burns of the capsule so that it would land only in friendly territories. Another big disadvantage of the capsule was reusability. Once used, they cannot be used again. So, keeping these problems in mind, NASA decided to do research on a steerable spacecraft to increase the landing envelope. But there was a problem here. It was very difficult to design a conventional aeroplane style re-entry vehicle. This is because the wings of the airplane will experience extreme dynamic and thermal stresses during re-entry into the atmosphere and hypersonic flight while leaving the Earth's atmosphere. So research for a new type of aircraft, which could ultimately eliminate the need of wings and generate lift alone with the help of its body was done. From 1963 to 1975, extensive research was done on lifting body aircraft at NASA's Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base. These lifting bodies were designed to prove the concept of flying a wingless vehicle back to Earth from space and landing it like a regular aircraft on a landing strip. Six vehicles of unconventional aerodynamic shapes were tested. The first test aircraft was the M2F1. During the initial test phase of the aircraft, it was towed by a Cadillac to test its aerodynamic shape. In the final stages of testing, they were towed to a higher altitude with the help of a towing aircraft. After reaching a certain altitude, the tow cable was cut and the aircraft glided back to the surface and landed on a landing strip. More than 400 ground tows and 77 aircraft tows were carried on the M2F1 variant before it was retired. The success of the M2F1 convinced the scientists that lifting bodies were a viable option for atmospheric re-entry. A new research aircraft called the M2F2 was then created. The testing of this variant was done by carrying the aircraft by a modified B-52 bomber. Once an altitude of 45,000 feet was reached, the aircraft was dropped from the B-52 wing pylons. It then glided down to the surface of the Earth where it landed on a landing strip. On May 10th, 1967, during the 16th glide flight, a landing accident severely damaged the vehicle and seriously injured the NASA pilot Bruce Peterson. A probe was ordered into the crash of the aircraft and it was found that the M2F2 had lateral control problems. So it was rebuilt and redesignated as the M2F3. This aircraft was modified with an additional third vertical fin which was centered between the top fins to improve its control characteristics. This variant was also fitted with a reaction jet control system. This is similar to the thrusters used in orbiting spacecrafts. This was also done to obtain research data on the effectiveness of the reaction jet for vehicle control. Three more designs of lifting body aircraft were designed by the US Air Force and NASA to further test the various shapes that could be used by re-entry vehicles. The first collaboration design was the HL-10. It first flew on December 22nd of 1966. The primary motive for the design was to settle a debate where the re-entry vehicles were supposed to have a sharp nose or a rounded one. Similar to the other lifting bodies, the HL-10 was also carried to a certain altitude by B-52 bomber and then released. It flew 37 times and set multiple program records. The HL-10 set the record for the maximum speed of a lifting body design. It reached a maximum speed of 1980 km per hour or Mach 1.86. 
It also flew at an altitude of 90,300 feet and set the record for the highest altitude reached by a lifting body. The data collected from the flights of the HL-10 were crucial for the designs of the space shuttles. The HL-10 flew its final flight on July 17, 1970. The last two variants of the lifting body aircraft were the X-24A and the X-24B. These two aircraft were built to gather data on the shape of re-entry vehicles. The X-24A was a bulbous shaped aircraft with three vertical fins at the rear for directional control, whereas the X-24B had a flat bottom with distinct control surfaces. The testing of the X-24A and the X-24B was similar to all other aircrafts. They were carried up to their designated altitude and then released for testing. The extra control surfaces of the X-24B increased the control of the aircraft substantially. Among the final flights of the X-24B were two precise landings on the main concrete runway at Edwards Air Force Base. The research data gathered from these planes was instrumental in deciding the shape of many reusable aircraft which are currently being used by NASA. The Dream Chaser program is currently being developed by NASA in collaboration with private firms for resupply missions to the International Space Station. This aircraft has a lifting body design similar to the experimental aircrafts. The aircraft is carried up to a certain altitude and then released. It then undergoes a free flight test and glides down to the runway. Many more experimental lifting body aircrafts are still being tested for reusability like the Boeing X-37. These aircrafts are undergoing modifications in their wing design to improve control during re-entry into the atmosphere. That's it guys. If you truly enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the like button and sharing it. It motivates us to make better videos for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. We bring in new content every day. So that's it for this video guys. I'll see you again in the next. Bye.